Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another brand spanking new episode of Talking Tongue. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even hear that music anymore because I turned it down. I'm still trying to get used to this live streaming production. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard stuff. You kind of already got a spoiler of what I just put up there. Ah, oh, I need like five hands for this thing. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Jirius. Thank you for coming into the stream. I uh, imagine a lot of you will be coming in, in and out of the stream. I just want you to say hi. Just come say hi to me. Drop a sick freestyle over the beat. Gotcha. Taylor, just for you, buddy. Friend of the show. He likes to be called friend of the show. But my name is Tongue. I'm your host today for Talking Tongue. I'll be your host all the time, I assume, for Talking Tongue. The show, the live stream show where we kind of, or I, find three topics of discussion every month. Usually the biggest things that came out that month. And I like to just talk about it. I have all these crazy, um, you know, thoughts about different things. And they need to be shared with you people uh, in the internet, in the in the ether of the internet. So thank you for joining us here today. Ah, yes, Jirius, you mean that much to me. Special shout out again to you. Uh, today's topics today, let's see here. Uh, today, we're going to tackle E3 2018. That's going to be a big one. Uh, we're also going to do uh, The Incredibles 2. Talk about that. Now, I'm having a hard time thinking you maybe you guys can help me out here but i like to actually spoil movies when i talk about once i've seen it but maybe to be a little bit more accessible i should stop doing that maybe i'll just talk about incredibles 2 in a general sense so because you guys gotta go see this movie i'm gonna spoil my cast ahead of time and say it's a good movie so go see it but we'll go into depth in a little bit uh and then i want to try something cool i'm gonna do a mario tennis aces demo uh live on the nintendo switch do it a la twitch style but here right here on facebook book uh so that should be fun um so i think we should just uh maybe get into it yeah let's see here uh well actually let's just let's do some upkeeping here uh i would say i forgot to mention happy belated pride happy belated pride to all to everybody it's a fun time for everyone uh happy belated uh also happy early canada day that's coming up soon uh canada's 151th birthday first time i haven't celebrated in ottawa so that's gonna be pretty f interesting for me uh but probably good for my feet because ottawa on canada day as you can imagine is pretty wild uh some things that i've been up to lately uh i've actually been watching bob's burgers quite a bit on season three now that's been pretty awesome uh turns out a really fun show i kind of start regretting my top five fictional moms i starting to see how linda belcher probably should have been on that list oops uh i've been re-watching breaking bad i just read today that breaking bad's uh 10th anniversary was celebrated today so that's that's very exciting uh okay enough of that enough of that let's let's just get right into it uh i'm gonna have to queue up some music some uh some super smash bros music because it's very fitting for to talk about e3 uh here we go there we go. Just have a little little background music while I talk about stuff. So E3, what is that? Uh, we're going to talk about the Electronics Entertainment Expo. Uh, this was this was created in, uh, May eleventh, nineteen ninety five, uh, and it was uh, for those of you who don't know, E three is an expo exhibition event for developers, publishers, manufacturers uh, to showcase titles uh, for video games and products to be sold in the realm of video games in the upcoming year. Uh, it used to be open only to like journalists, uh, but then over the years they opened it up to streamers, uh, YouTubers, I guess that's a kind of a streamer, and, and now to the public. Uh, it's taken, it's done at the Los Angeles Convention Center. It's quite the big deal. I would love to go one day uh, and, and see what that's all about, but it seems like it would be a pretty fun time. Uh, so, let me just pull this up here. There you go, a little window capture right here. I want to pull up 
just kind of a, I, I, there's no way I can go through all the video games that have come out. Otherwise, that's going to take the entire hour that I'm going to be talking on Talking Tongue today. Uh, I just like to go through some highlights that I really thought were fun. Uh, and let's just go right into it. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ah, it's coming out. Nintendo uh, announced Super Smash Bros, which everyone kind of had a feeling it would be announced. But you know what? Who cares? I'm excited. You're excited. Uh, everybody says every Nintendo console needs a Super Smash Bros, and they're giving it to us this year, which is very exciting. Uh, the only thing they don't have is other games. They didn't release or announce many games for Nintendo for the upcoming future. I mean, Mario Tennis just came out, which is, we'll get to that. Uh, they announced Mario Party, I guess. Uh, Fortnite, if you're into that thing. I'm not, but whatever. Most popular game in the world. Can't blame them for putting it on the one of the most popular consoles in the world. But Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, we they, they spent a huge segment talking about that. And, um, and apparently it just has every single character that has ever been a playable character in Super Smash Brothers, which I thought was uh, pretty awesome. Uh, top five games at E3 2018. Or, yeah, uh, pff, I have so many opinions. But uh, I guess I'll, I'll be talking about at least four of them today. Um, and, yeah, so what we got we got the splatoon kids we got zero suit samus we fit trainer we uh they're doing uh, the newest character that like an actual announced new character is ridley from metroid prime which i thought was uh or he's just metroid in general it's a giant dragon thing but as you can see here they have uh uh ryu they have cloud strife they had they have uh snake from metal gear solid they have a lot a lot of characters uh, and, and it's gonna be fun. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I haven't really seen too much of the footage besides I know it's gonna be Super Smash Brothers. It's gonna be some fun ultimates, but it, It's just I don't know. There's something about that game that has always pulled me in and I'm just really excited about it So uh, I just want to keep things rolling. I have a lot of things to talk about. I want to talk about today uh, Next thing uh, that my biggest highlight from the Sony press conference was uh, uh Hideo Kojima talked about Death Stranding, which is a really trippy out, trippy game from the makers of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, it's this trippy game with uh, starring Norman Reedus. You might recognize him as uh, your favorite. What's his name in Walking Dead? God damn it, Daryl. Daryl. Uh, he got that actor to just be in this really weird game that I have nothing. I have no idea what it's about. But there's like a talking baby thingy. I don't even know if it talks, but it. This guy that carries a baby around with him everywhere. I don't know. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. Um, that looks kind of cool. Last of Us 2, of course. But the one that stood out for me from Sony was Spider-Man. Obviously, Spider-Man, my favorite hero. Uh, and, yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this. If anyone's seen this trailer yet. But it's bonkers. It's the same people who made uh, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, what did Taylor say? Uh, Dream Smash Brothers character. Goku. Hands down, Goku. That'd be awesome. He'd be probably very unbalanced, but <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome. Any, what, do, what, what did you think? What would you pick? Um, and yeah, so as you can see, it, the Spider-Man trailer has a lot of like, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but obviously look at it. It looks gorgeous right off the get-go. But if you look at the, the way it moves, it, it looks very fluid, exactly how Spider-Man should move. And it's surprising to me. There's been like maybe one good Spider-Man game ever, Spider-Man 2. I, I, I played it on the PC, but uh, this game here, Spider-Man is moving around, swinging around like a spider would. Uh, he fights in this uh, game a lot like the Batman Arkham games. So I'll, I'll move around like this, yeah, as you can see. But it's like very cinematic. Look at him move around and like kick people and punch people in the throat and... You can see that uh, Spidey sense that's going around his head. It, it's it's pretty awesome, uh, I have to say. So I, I, I'm very excited uh, to see this game in action. And uh, well, let me just maximize this again. Look at this. Oh, it's crazy. And, and I think they end this trailer. Uh, spoilers, kind of. Uh, it's a trailer. Come on. Uh, with the Sinister Six. So like Spider-Man's famously... Uh, they're like villain Justice League, but not as evil <laughs> and not as strong as the justice league uh, all right let's move on to uh i guess my very favorite thing that's come out and i didn't even know i was excited about it until i saw it and that is cyberpunk 2077 i had no idea what this game was even about until they 
they released it. They released a trailer. I'm like, what is this thing? It, it's 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 cyber. It's punk. It's cyberpunk. It's it's a futuristic game made by uh, Project CD CD Project. I forget what they're called. Uh, CD Project. And uh, the same people who made The Witcher 3. So you know those people spend forever to make a video game. But when they make it, damn, they make it. Uh, but as you can see, it's like this futuristic look of what the world would look like today. And I I don't even know what the gameplay is going to be about. I'll be honest. I, I imagine it's going to be like GTA-esque. But there's it's cyberpunk. So there has to be obviously like futuristic guns and... Uh, cars and cool tech so I'm excited to see where that goes all right uh, moving on moving on has anybody in whoever's watching right now any favorites from e3 that you feel here's one that I'm a sucker for I'm not even sure if these are good games anymore I loved them when I was a kid screw it I, I think I still like these games I played mostly every one of them Kingdom Hearts 3 ah look you got your friend Donald you got goofy you got Sora, who's not a Disney character, but who cares? Because he interacts with them. He fights people with a giant, literal keyblade, a, a sword that looks like a, a house key. Uh, and he interacts with Disney characters. Uh, I'm really excited for this game. I played Kingdom Hearts 2 when I was in grade 10, and that was like... I think Kingdom Hearts 3 came out in like... I don't even know, like 2004, 2005? I was... I was, in, I was in high school still, I know that, and I've been way out of high school, at least 10 years out of high school now. Um, and then they, and then after that, they, they're like, we're going to do Kingdom Hearts 3 for the PS3, which they, they never did. They kept delaying it, delaying it. They kept making spin-off games. They made like 8, 10 spin-off games, and now you can buy them as a huge collection on the PS4. Uh, and, and now we're finally getting it. All these years later, uh, we're going to get uh, a little bit of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, as you can see, we got like Hercules. They're gonna do freaking Toy Story. Sora and Goofy and Donald are gonna hang out with Woody and Buzz. They're gonna hang out with the Monsters Inc. crew. Uh, they're gonna do Pirates of the Caribbean again, Tangled. Uh, I I think it's it's gonna be exciting. I wonder what if, if one day if they continue with this franchise, if they get to do Star Wars, for example. So I think that would be pretty awesome. All right, here let's uh, pause the music and. Uh, Check in with the chat. Steampunk is a plague to society. I, uh, in what way? In what way, Taylor? Uh, it sounds like you're a little bitter on, on Steampunk here. Uh, I'd like to hear why. I'd like to hear why. And uh, let's see here. While I'm getting the next thing queued up, I need to take a little little sip. Uh, this Today's episode brought to you by... More kombucha. Obviously, I've been on a huge kombucha craze, and it's not stopped. The obsession has only grown. We're doing two gallons a week. Laura says they're out of control. I agree. But, hey, it's good. I, I, like, I got a watermelon lemonade kombucha going on right now. And uh, it's, it's good, I got to say. I, I'm going to start my own kombucha business. Uh, tongbucha. Kombucha tongue. I, I don't know. I haven't thought of the name yet. It's delicious. Um, Taylor says, uh, steampunk, they look ridiculous and add nothing to the conversation. Hey, if you do it right, then I'm all for it. Pirates have been done a million times. Ninjas have been done a million times. The old West has been done a million times. When are you going to float some of that kombucha my way? Says Dan Forrester. Hey man, all you got to do is ask if you want a SCOBY. <laughs> Actually tonight's kombucha night. So I, I have, uh, <laughs> like eight probably eight scobies the giant yeast thingies that i can give away if you're looking for kombucha hey you you came to the right place uh i'm gonna queue up some music let's do it i'm gonna do some incredibles too all right let's turn that down a bit um and, and let's and i want to pull some uh trailers to play while we're while we're chatting about it. Here we go. All right. What is there to say? What is there to say about this movie? It, first of all, look at, listen to the soundtrack. 
I mean, I know it's pretty similar to the original Incredible soundtrack, but it's amazing. It's one of those superhero movies that make you feel it's fun. It's it's lighthearted. There's a lot of heart to it, and and it makes you jazz. It literally jazzes you up with all its jazzy superhero tunes. Uh, and I don't know. Gosh, uh, the first Incredibles came out in 2004. Made a huge splash. People were like, "Where is Incredibles 2? Where is Incredibles 2?" And and then they made it. Brad Bird was like, "All right, I got an idea. I'm gonna do it." And uh, Taylor, aren't you an improviser? I haven't done improv in three months. I'm rusty, man. I'm a rusty nail. Uh, Ethan has joined the conversation. Hello, Ethan. Um, nice to see you. Thank you for dropping in. Um, I'm always distracted by the t chat. I'm I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, but um, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, 2004, First Incredibles was made. Laura and I watched it the other day. And uh, I'm not going to go ahead and say it was incredible because that's lame. I guess I just did. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. It was incredible. The First Incredibles was awesome. Um, if you go back to it, it holds up extremely well. Uh, the only, well, the big difference in animation is now the technology has gotten so much better. Frozone's ice looks legit <laughs> it it looks like something you can touch where back in the day it's like that's pretty good animation but you can tell pixar had to cut some corners in like the uh the set dressing everything's a lot of it's bare bones it isn't uh crisp they didn't have that uh technology done yet so everything's kind of uh, a little bland in the backgrounds in some spots you can notice that but overall like still pretty vibrant and they do some really cool stuff in the first Incredibles. Uh, second Incredibles, uh, well, let's talk box office numbers because money is always fun, right? Uh, it was the, It's the biggest animated opening of all time. Biggest animated opening of all time. Think about that. That's, that's nuts. Like, there's been a slew of animated movies in the last couple years that it feels like every year it's the biggest animated opening of all time. But the last time they had... The biggest animated opening was Finding Dory, which was kind of whatever. Uh, Mr. Incredible Stubble was also quite detailed this time around, Dan Forrester. Uh, it was. It really was. If you're like, if you look really closely in uh, this this uh, movie, Incredibles 2, you can see the individual like arm hairs on his arm, which I thought was really, uh, really cool. Uh, Ethan says, what up, homie? Uh, not much. Uh, dog. God, I'm not cool anymore. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm going to pull my Ottawa car card away from me. Um, you can see the loose fibers on their clothes. Taylor, did you watch Incredibles 2? And, and, and he, sorry, I know I keep getting sidetracked by uh, the comments here, but uh, Taylor mentioned, who would you cast in a new Fantastic Four movie? Honestly, I, I'm not really good at that who would you cast kind of thing, but it's it's baffling to me, and I know this is, this is been beaten to death this this concept this idea but marvel has not done uh never done a good fantastic four movie and uh brad bird disney pixar has done two really good basically fantastic four movies uh where it all focuses on family which i think is like the key to these movies incredibles is that it you can you can argue a lot about the villain in this movie and I will, i'll kind of get into that but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter it's all about the family and the family dynamics and how they 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 talk with each other and uh the emotion they have for one another um but going back to money uh basically we have fighting dory that opened at 135 million and we have incredibles 2 at 180 million which is insane like just think about that for a second. That's a huge difference. Uh, in terms of the movie itself, uh, I, I want to go... Actually, you know what? Let's step back. I keep getting sound sidetracked. Bao. I just started learning how to make bao. It's like an Asian steam bun. Uh, and in this movie, it kind of hit for me because I'm like, oh my God, they're making the thing that I just made a couple weeks ago. Just learned how to make. And uh, I think it's an incredible story. I, I had to ask Laura for a very simple clarification clarification later. But it was kind of like, I shouldn't have been confused with that. Anyways, I don't want to spoil Bao for you. But it's about this little living steam bun, little baby, and you see its growth. And it hits you in the Pixar feels. I won't get into it, but it was incredibly done. Uh, I feel like their animated shorts have been just all bangers. Everything except for that freaking, 
Frozen Christmas special that they did for Coco. That was that was awful. Uh, but this bow one was really, really good. Um, the, the story for Incredibles 2 picks up right after Incredibles 1. So it's kind of nuts. Like 14 year difference since the last Incredibles. And it almost demands that you watch it back to back. You don't need to, but it's awesome to like finish Incredibles 1, go see Incredibles 2. Picks up basically right where it left off. Um, I also believe that Bao Bao means baby in Mandarin. No way. Is that why little Bow Wow called them? Yeah, there's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm, I'm not good. My improv skills, they're rusty. They're all rust. Um, John Krasinski for Mr. Fantastic. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, and yeah, this this movie picks up right from right off from Incredibles 1. So they have this huge right off the get go, uh, just set piece, action piece. And, and in this movie, it is like the best super like in Marvel movies, you're you're in awe. You're like, oh my god, this this action, this this it's awesome. It's everything's happening on screen. It's it's crazy. But in animation, they can literally make anything happen, and they do. In this movie, they do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, you really get to see everyone's powers showcased in a really fun animated way. Except, uh, you know, whatever. Mister Fantastic's, Mister Incredible. Sorry, Mister Incredible's power is super strength. So super strength, kind of boring power. You don't. I mean, you can lift heavy stuff. Yay. Really fun. Easy to animate, I'd assume. But if you look at Violet's power with her, like, force fields and how they look right now, and especially, especially Elastigirl's uh, powers in this movie, uh, you can see how much fun they have with their animation. Uh, maybe a little bit too fun. I don't want to get it creepy, but the way they animate Elastigirl in this movie, I don't know if it's intentional, but they really have her proportion sizes way crazy. Like I'll just go ahead and say it. Elastigirl, she's a fat butt. She's a fat butt and they are not afraid to flaunt it many, many times in this movie. It's uh, to hilarious extents in some cases. Uh, um, but yeah, we, the, the story really revolves around like, and we've kind of seen this story before, but the Incredibles t tackle it in a really cool way. It's the story where, Nobody wants superheroes, so superheroes have to prove their worth to society. And, and to some extent, the bad guy, Screen Slaver, uh, great name, uh, has something to say, like the commentary behind that, although I heard Brad Bird said, don't look into it too much. Screen Slaver's abilities is to control people through screens. So there's maybe a little bit of commentary of how we as a people keep looking at screens. In fact, I'm looking at three right now, so <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, Let's see here. We have some new fun side characters. Uh, Bob Odenkirk comes back uh, as a, his name is Winston, his character. Uh, and uh, he's the guy who's like, I'm going to help superheroes become super irrelevant again. And then he has a sister who's kind of like the, the tech whiz and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Catherine Keener's uh, character. And, and they do a great job. And, and in this movie, we have a lot of fun side characters. We have uh, a hilarious raccoon fight with Jack Jack and... You've heard it many times, probably, if you read any review, but I, I, I won't beat it to death again. Jack-Jack does steal the show in many ways. Every, every scene that he's in, uh, he does some cool shit. You barely see him in the first Incredibles, and you, they tease that he has many powers in the first Incredibles at the very end. Uh, but in the second one, he's you get to see more. You get to see more Jack-Jack. It's a baby with superpowers. What else do you want? Uh, Edna, uh, Edna Mode comes back. Uh, she is as funny as ever. Uh, Frozone, Samuel Jackson's Frozen character. He, I wish he had more to do, honestly. He's such a cool character. They basically make him like the uncle chaperone of uh, the Parr family, uh, the entire movie. And uh, that's all he gets to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I, I'm just, I have, I'm just kind of reading my notes at the same time. I'm talking about how the movie is really vibrant. We've talked about that. Actually, the scene that just passed there, it was uh, basically. You, my, my big complaint is they don't show Frozone's wife, sassy wife. I want to see her. Uh, she gets to have one more line that's pretty sassy, not on the same level. But uh, I, I wanted to see her character and like maybe see like a dinner scene with the Parr family and Frozone's like wife. And I think it'd be really fun. Uh, this trailer is now showing Heidi Klum. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning because that's not Incredibles. Um, let's see. Uh, the story has a lot of... 
you could groan because you're like, oh, they've done this before a million times. There's a role reversal where Elastic Girl's out fighting crime and Bob's a stay at home dad. And oh my God, he has to take care of the kids. Oh my God. It's like he's the woman of the house and she's the man. And they kind of flip exactly how they were in Incredibles 1. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't think you should. I mean, every idea has been done to death, but I think Incredibles tackles it in a really great way. And even though if you go into that movie being like, that's all I'm going to see, you're wrong because they 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 go above and beyond and they show some really cool stuff there. Um, actually, how's that Incredibles music going? Oh, OK. I just had to. I can't hear the music that I'm playing in the background, so uh, I had to check on it. Apparently, it's playing another song altogether. Uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Anyways, uh, I, I think the role reversal completely worked out, and uh, I don't think you should be scared that that's all you're going to watch. I think they, they develop the relationship very well and what it means to be a father and what it means to be a mother and what it means to be in a family and Dash and Violet have some of the funniest things in the entire movie of what it's like to be growing up with as a kid with superpowers but also what it means to just grow up and take care of one another and this movie's funny too which I really really like I will say it doesn't make you cry I think there's a level in Pixar Pixar bar where it's like did this movie make me cry no it did not make me cry but I mean I don't think it has to. I think it, it's pretty darn solid. Um, let's see here. And and the um, and I will go into spoilers in this episode of Talking Tongue, but I I've been giving it a lot of thought, and I, I do think that the main complaint that people talk about is the the villain screen slaver and the the twist and everything like that. And I will agree that it's not as big as good as a villain as say syndrome was in the first Incredibles. He was a lot of fun, but th this villain is completely fine. I had no problem with it. It wasn't, didn't break any ground, but I had, a, it was just fun. And again, fun is the big thing in this movie. It just, you're going to have a good time. If you go watch this movie, uh, and my favorite scene in the movie is Elastigirl, it has a new bike called the Elasticycle, and it stretches with her, so she does some really cool Spider-Man type shit with it, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, any other last-minute things I want to say? Uh, a couple shout-outs. Uh, there's a Baby versus Raccoon thing. I think I talked about that amazing scene. Uh, where's Frozone's wife? I talked about that. Uh, and uh, I don't really want to talk about that last thing because it spoils the end of the movie, but I do hope there is another Incredibles uh, down the road. I, I really, I really do. I, I think this movie was really great. Oh, and you can cut. Oh, that scene that just passed there. I forgot. There's this one scene. If you are kind of sensitive to light and flashing lights <laughs> and seizure type stuff, there is one scene. It's very, very intense uh, that, that they go for it. There is some really crazy lights that are going. And I think it's beautifully animated but i would maybe throw a little bit caution if flashing lights is kind of uh scares you a bit because uh there is a scene that kind of goes bonkers with their lights and i think it's really cool uh okay let's see let's chop by some chat see what's going on the fight scene in screen slaver's apartment was so good right it was awesome i thought so uh, let's see here. Careloft, hello. Hakan, nice to nice to see ya. Thank you for dropping in. Trevor, thank you. Also, Leslie, welcome. Where were you? Where have you been? The people have been waiting for Leslie Cherapy. Um, any other favorite scenes from The Incredibles? Anyone who's seen it already? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna turn off this window capture thing. Oh my God. I'm telling you, watermelon lemonade kombucha. I like it a lot. Today, hmm, I haven't really given it much thought about what the next kombucha flavor I can do, but it's gonna be good. I swear, I, I, I'm I'm very excited for it. Um, okay, let's let's get things rolling here. Uh, so while I'm gonna take maybe a minute while I set up the Nintendo Switch, I haven't basically set up, but I'm gonna. I'm going to play some some Switch for you guys. Does that sound okay? I think it's going to sound okay. Uh, I'm going to use the Pro Controller here. Uh, this $100 controller is 
awesome for the Nintendo Switch if you guys don't have it already. I think it's one of my favorite controllers. I am pretty mad that I invited a friend over for a pre-party. Uh, I'm not going to name any names. Oh, I'm not saying I'm mad. I was just kind of like, ugh. Uh, complete, nicest girl in the world. And uh, we're just having some drinks with some other people. And she has club soda. Is about to pour it in her whatever gin. And she opens the bottle and it spills everywhere. It spills entirely everywhere. It started to bubble up. And her gut reaction, poor girl, was instead of putting her like mouth over it to drink it or putting her hand on top of it so it wouldn't fizz, fizz out, her solution was to simply... Uh, <laughs> It was to just kind of just flail around and let the fizz go everywhere in the room. So like my TV was wet, my my uh, Apple TV was wet, my my Switch controller was wet with club soda. Uh, a bunch of controllers were, and I'm like, ugh. So my controller has been very very uh, sticky. I've been trying everything, rubbing alcohol, whatever, uh, and it's and it's uh it's fine. But this controller, 100 bucks, is um, it's kind of sad that it doesn't work the same way as it used to. It's just really mushy. That's all it is. It still works. I shouldn't complain. Anyways, let's get the show on the road. All right. I got to get the switch going. Let me just switch monitors here, too. Okay. And we're going to do this. Whoa. Isn't that fun? So, it's going to make sure that we have some volume on the stream. All right. How's that? How's that look? Looks exactly like a Twitch stream, doesn't it? Uh, Sarah, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining in the, the thing, in the live stream. Okay. So, this is Mario Tennis. Now, uh, let's get to a part that's not this. Uh, I'm just going to, and the people who are listening to this as a podcast at home, obviously the best way to listen to Talking Tongue is on the live stream on Facebook, but you can also find us at uh, on YouTube and I'll be posting the full video there. And, you know, you can just simply just watch the full video uh, on, uh, on the Facebook page as well. So... Uh, let's get into it. So, this is Mario Tennis Aces. It just came out for the Nintendo Switch. I love Mario Tennis. I love tennis in general as a sport. I think it's really fun. Um, and, and these are the modes it offers. It's, it's, it's an, it's, in Canada, it's an $80 game. It's a huge buy-in. I've been bugging a lot of people at work to buy it because I want them to play with me. But it, it is about, uh, 80 bucks. It'll cost you 90 bucks with tax. And... And I think it's worth it. If you like Mario Tennis, then it has every. It's it's the best Mario Tennis game that you've ever done. The only thing that's lacking is possibly modes, because this is what it has. So uh, I'll kind of just walk through really quickly of what this is. But we have our adventure uh, little panel here. We have our tournament free to free play. Uh, tournament is like their online stuff going on. Um, and since the Nintendo Switch is uh, you know, Wi-Fi chip in it isn't very good. I bought this USB adapter Ethernet thingy for it. So if you're interested in playing Switch Online the best way, uh, it's like 20 bucks. I can link it to if you want. Uh, just message me later uh, and I'll link it to you. Uh, we have free play, which is just uh, just changing up the rules slightly and like local play kind of thing. Swing mode, uh, kind of swinging the the joy cons around like a wii controller and playing like that i have not tried that i heard it's not very good uh and and that's it that they, they have that that's it <laughs> so uh, basically the the hook of this game is playing online with people they have their their adventure mode uh like i said and i'm gonna hop in really quick for it uh and i'll show you a little bit of what's happening here all right savage sea bay Okay, so their adventure mode is pretty short, and uh, it's not really a spoiler to show you, tell you what the story is all about, but basically, uh, <laughs> it all comes down to there's this evil tennis racket that has possessed 
Wario and Waluigi and and now they're wreaking havoc kind of thing and they have to find five power stone <coughs> infinity stones to by playing games of tennis with people around this map this world and uh to free everyone from this evil possessed tennis racket that is possessing other people that's the that's the story um so the the game is brought and i've been playing this the story mode for like I don't know, less than four hours for sure, and, and it's pretty short. Uh, it's I'm, according to this, I'm almost done the game, uh, but that's fine. I, I think it's pretty fun. You get to do some fun challenges. I'm, I'll maybe I'll uh, bring you over here to this. Uh, I didn't actually get to vet which one I wanted to do. Uh, let's do this one, sure. Um. So you'll get to do things that are not just tennis in this game. You'll get to uh, do this, like this. It says, defeat 30 piranha plants within the time planet. Time planet. Time limit. Uh, and, oh, got to hit start. So, I got my Mario right here. He has this frost. Uh, yes, I have an elemental tennis racket that does damage because in this game you you do damage you can break people's rackets uh but oh my god i'm so bad at this game uh so look i just have to return it and basically kill the piranha plants with my my with a magical tennis racket uh and i can do cool stuff like that and yeah that's that's like that's one of the few kind of things that you can do in the the single player game. I, I won't continue with that. It, it's like that for thirty rounds. Uh, I want to find a boss. Actually, I guess I can go back to the the boss I was going to fight in my actual campaign right now. Um, and let's go to. And yes, in the single player game, you can just play like basic tennis against Koopa and Shy Guy and all that kind of stuff. But uh, there's some fun stuff you can do, and let's just skip ahead here. Uh, look, I have a boss battle. <laughs> so instead of Mario, who's famously known for stomping on people with his foot, his boots that will probably kill people, he is going to fight them with the power of sports. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> And as you saw, I got hit and I lose time. So I don't have HP in the in the single player game, but I do have. Uh, every time I get hit, I lose time, off my. Off my uh, how long I can beat the guy. Uh, looks like he's firing a bunch of ink balls, and the whole idea is to just hit him back. And yeah, I the, the single player has some cool stuff, but I I just have to say it's just really short. But I guess that's not really too much of a complaint because. Uh, I'll be honest like even though it's just fun kind of gimmicky type stuff uh, It's not really why I play Mario Tennis. I don't need to play this for like an eight-hour campaign uh, I, I saw a couple reviews being disappointed that um, They there wasn't more to do in the single-player campaign um, Anyways, so that's that's kind of what a quick look of the single player is and I'll, I'll show you one last oh my god Oh my god I'll show you one last thing over here, and maybe I'll check chat while I'm at it. Uh, Chris Atkins, hello! Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Um, let me show you the stats page. So Mario, you level him up. It's like an RPG, uh, and I'm level 23, whatever that means. Uh, you'll gain levels even if you fail a level, uh, and every time you gain a level you'll you'll add more to your shot speed your run speed your agility you can only pay play as mario in, in the single player campaign as far as i know uh and you can change rackets so in this game you can break your rackets uh but each of my rackets the, i have the ice racket the mirror racket and the and mario's racket and uh they all have their different stats but basically it comes down to as you progress through the story the newest racket is the best racket that's it. Uh, I want to hop into so that, that that's basically adventure mode. You get to do some cool stuff in there, but uh, and, and 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 some really fun courts too. Like there's like this uh, there's like this sailing one where there's like this giant post in the middle. So there's just 
if you hit the post, it kind of bounces off the post and it really kind of psychs out your opponent. There's another mirror one. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. Uh, there is, let's see, where is it? Mirage Mansion. Here we go. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Um, no, that's not it. Let's see. Ah, yes. Okay. There's this court here, which I'll show you. Uh, it's a fun gimmicky court. Where if I hit it into one of these mirrors, it comes out the other end. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm, I'm just too good at this game that obviously I'm uh, not hitting the mirrors really well. Okay, let's try this. Boom. And I realize people at home on the, the audio version who are listening to this, they might not find this part of the podcast very fun. But I'm telling you, join, join the, the Facebook crew. Just, just join us. There we go. Goes in, comes out the other. So, kind of fun. Uh, in this game, and, and maybe while I'm playing uh, Boo over here, I can show you every every character. Uh, there's your classic amount of Mario characters in this game. Uh, I have a couple that I have not unlocked. But as you progress through the story, you'll also unlock tennis courts too. So, uh, for the uh, free play mode. Uh, in this game, you have your top spin, which is uh, this red-looking kind of uh, attack here, as you can see. Uh, if I hold, oops, if I hold the Y button, I have that purple, which is a flat shot. It, it goes more towards the back. Um, and hang on, if I hit B, it's a slice, so it's a bit slower, but you can really psych people out. And this is a good sh case to show you that in this game, you can slow down time. You get a little bullet time, and, and in the top left corner, you can see that uh, I have a meter. I have a gauge um, that shows me when that thing fills up, I can use that for A, bullet time, B, uh, something called a uh, star shot, which I've done a couple times now. I'll try to do it right now, like this, where you get to aim the shot. And as you can see there, I talked about like breaking rackets. If you don't time your shot perfectly to block one of those star shots, you just you break someone's racket and it's pretty intense if you break your rackets your opponent's racket completely during a game uh they just lose the match straight up they have you can't like fix your racket through the game it's just yay block the shot or don't even bother because you will lose the game um and yeah and then the rest of the game is pretty much just like regular pair uh uh Mario Tennis. Uh, I will show one last thing. I kind of did it a couple times when I was fighting that giant squid, but uh, you can do something called trick shots. So if I hit the uh, right analog over here in a direction, whatever character will kind of do some weird kind of action to get to the ball quicker and uh, build up some gauge. Usually. Yeah. So if I, as you can, if you, do, if you notice in the top left corner, my, my meter went up a little bit. Uh, I want to show one last thing. Hopefully, I can get enough meter for it. But every character has uh, basically a ultimate super special. I don't even have to be near the ball, and I can get to it. Uh, but also, this shot will decimate you if you try to block it. You can try to bl you can block it successfully, but it will push you back and break your racket pretty easily. Uh, and it, it's pretty cool. Every every character has that. All right. Uh, let's check in chat real quick here. Do you think there's going to be any DLC for the single player, Ethan? Um, I doubt it. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think they need to. I think that'd be a lot of work and nobody would care about it. I'm kind of peeved that Nintendo is going to start charging for their online service, considering that matching up with people isn't, isn't very fun. Um, it's, you know, and, and, and what I... When I mean not fun, I mean I don't think they have their their online service figured out yet very well. Like it works, and especially works better with the Ethernet cable. But it doesn't. It. I think they should build a better system of how they match people. In fact, just for funsies, let's play a match. Let's play an online match, a real live online match with people, and see if we win together. Um, now. Just judging by the people who are watching and commenting on this live stream right now, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, everyone's favorite character, obviously, it, uh, hang on, I got to show this. Look at Chain Chomp. Has, it's adorable. 
he has a tennis racket in his mouth and that's how he plays tennis uh, I mean they did do that new single player DLC right could do the same for this they could do that that'd be awesome uh, Dan there's I'm not thrilled about that either their service doesn't feel polished right it's but you know Nintendo's charging like 20 bucks a year for their service and you get like one classic Nintendo game a month so I guess that's okay but they could make it better a and they're charging people and in that service there you get cloud saves which I think should just be normal because if you lose your Nintendo switch right now you lose everything it's it's kind of ridiculous um, since Ethan Dan a bunch of a couple other people are in this chat uh, you guys all look like uh, Wario or Waluigi I can't I can't tell I can't tell which kind of people you are I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess Wario. Actually, no. I'm gonna go with Waluigi. He's he's a uh, he's a you guys type of guy for sure. Character. All right. Uh, maybe I'll play uh, just a quick match here. Ethan says Waluigi. I knew I, I picked I picked the right character. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw on the side there, but it also tells me how many times I've I've lost, which is. Many. <laughs> I've lost many times. Uh, people are good at this game. It's it's freaking ridiculous. Uh, lost, uh, the only time I've won games is with Wario. Uh, all right. Let's see. Pod caverns serve. All right. Let's get these people. Yeah. Uh, if I if I don't talk too much during this part of the stream, I'm sorry. Uh, I must focus to beat Rosalina. Uh, obviously you can do your drop shots and your lobs and all that cool stuff. Uh, come on. She is not holding back. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Kevin, thank you for joining the stream. Um, okay. So, oh no. Oh. See, for shots that you miss, you can do that trick shot. Sometimes it puts you in a bad spot, so it's not always good to do it. But, uh, oh, God. No. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm making all these grunt noises like I'm playing actual tennis. But it's, but it's intense, everyone. It's, this, this game's intense. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but War uh, Waluigi totally moonwalked to get to that, uh, <laughs> to that, to that ball. Uh, all right, let's see if I can win. Uh, matches online are pretty quick. They're their best uh, two out of three matches. Uh, if you get two, then obviously you win. Look at that moonwalk. He's so cool. Uh, why am I not using the gauge? Uh, you might be wondering why I'm saving my super. Well, the thing is, if she use, I'm trying to be smart about it. And this game's kind of cool because it's kind of like a fighting game. You kind of have to kind of really sense when the opponent is going to do a thing. But if she uses her super, then I want to be able to use my super right back. And it kind of cancels her. Oh! Okay. See, I, I use it there because it was a drop shot I was totally not going to make. And boom. And she's going to... She's not very good. I think I'm going to win this match, guys. <laughs> uh, if she was smart, she would have done the same thing back to me. But yes, you can slow down time and block the shot. You have to be directly in front of it to to, to block it successfully. Otherwise, no dice. Let's see here. Oh, there she goes. So that's when you immediately slow down time. Get in front of it and boom. Okay, I broke my racket. So clearly, I'm not a good teacher. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. I'm trying to be like, oh, I can do this. Um, so since she broke my racket, I only have one more time. If she breaks it again, oh god, uh, she breaks it again. I, I, I'm done. So I, I just lose straight up, lose the rest of the match, uh, which is not fun. So I hope I don't lose. In fact, I'm just going to try to kill her right now. And by kill, I mean beat her at this video game. I'm not a killer. While Luigi doesn't kill. Uh, 
that perfectly positioned shot. I, I, I can and will be a tennis master one day. Um, hit the body shot. Uh, body shots, man. I was playing Ultimate Frisbee yesterday, and I got hit by a body, body shot, which kind of just completely screwed our team over. Uh, they were pulling the Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, oh! Who cares about that story? Waluigi wins. Waluigi wins. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Uh, Alistair, thank you for joining the stream, man. Thank you for just being here. Uh, but as you can see, pretty awesome. And, and then you kind of kind of keep going with that. So this game's a lot of, it's, it's that. This game is this. It's just going through this fake tournament. Uh, I don't have to, here, I'm going to return to the menu here. Uh, but this is what I have. I have rankings. Apparently there'll be another tournament in July. Uh, simple rules is you play without all that power stuff and then we have this standard so I can resume my tournament but it really I actually I've only won three times max in that tournament I've never won a tournament but I think they just match you with the random people and if you get to the top then you get more points or something I don't really know what points are good for because it doesn't look like they match you based on points so I'm not completely sure um, but yeah, that is Mario Tennis. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to check back with chat. And I'm just going to switch back to the other screen while I'm at it. Uh, which tennis do you like better, Prince of Tennis or Mario Tennis? Don't make me choose, Ethan. That is a ridiculous question. You're asking me, me to choose against anime and Mario Tennis, which is the video game anime. Uh, I think the last tennis game I played was Super Tennis for the SNES. Uh, I never played that one. I, I played Mario Tennis, the Power Tennis for GameCube, which I really liked. I didn't play the Wii U one. I heard that one wasn't very good. Um, I played uh, Virtual Tennis, which was more real tennis in a way. It's uh, with some real people. Uh, oh, looks like the video game music's still playing. Ah, it's tough to manage your own audio during, during a podcast, I have to say. Uh, let's move on to... Ah, there we go. There we go. Uh, Mario Tennis looks a little bit better than I, I guess. You, you should play it. You should play it. You both should play this game. If you have a Nintendo Switch, I definitely recommend it. But, yeah, I mean, that's what you're getting into if you just like playing some sweet time. And I bet you it's an awesome uh, co-op couch player game. If you have a lot of people who are coming over, like, let's play some tennis. This game is extremely, extremely easy to pick up and just play with people. There's only a couple buttons you have to learn. Uh, the rest is just skill. Like you can learn how to slow down time, which is one button and hit smash shots and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't want to play with any of that gimmicky stuff, I don't think it's gimmicky, but like more complicated stuff, you can just play the simple rules and, and you'll probably be fine. Whew, okay. Uh, we're almost at the end of our show here. Oh, that booch. Um, for the people who have stuck around, thank you. Uh, the people who have just dropped in, thank you as well. If you are just watching this later on a stream, uh, or just watching the stream later, feel free to comment anyways. I'll get back to you. Uh, I have a lot of fun with this show. It's it's, it's just cool to, to talk to you guys, and it's been a while. It's been a while. And uh, I'd like to show you, the people at home, uh, something I've been working on. You'll be the first to see, uh, but if you liked me just talking about video games and whatever and it's it's been teased for a while but i'm gonna announce to you but 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 let's play some music while we get to it let's play a little bit um actually screw it we don't need music for this let's say i'm about to announce i don't know how to hype this up any better you know what forget it <laughs> uh this is we have ranked top five lists of stuff that don't matter. That's one of the podcasts at the Pod Cavern. We have the Improv Punch Up. That's another podcast. We have Talk and Tongue, this show right here. And now we have finally our fourth show to expand the network. Uh, it's another one of my passion projects that I've been working on. But as you can see, I, I just like talking about video games and just having people watch it. And I, I love watching other people play video games too. And here we go. This is... My new Twitch channel artwork. Look at it. It's it's me. It's it's me. Wait, hang on. I'll, I'll do the. Uh, wait, uh, hang on. Uh, 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 uh. 
Uh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, Pod Cavern plays. This is this is uh, some awesome artwork that I got done online. Uh, Fiverr, amazing, amazing website. They just. He's like, I'm like, can you can you make this artwork that looks like me wearing headphones with a PS4 controller and just pointing outwards and the guy and wearing a Captain America shirt? And he's like, yeah, OK, I sent him a couple pictures and boom, there it is. Uh, he looks great, doesn't he? Uh, I'm really excited to start doing Twitch stuff. Um, and I'll show you here. I'm going to put that down, uh, post the official pick later. That's a little sneak peek. But um, I want to show you my Twitch channel. I, I don't have much going on right now. I'm trying to find. A good time to stream so uh my schedule is not i'm a, I'm a pretty busy guy i don't want to be like oh i'm too busy all the time look at me i'm tongue Bleh. but <laughs> basically i do i do a lot of hobby type stuff and i'm just wanted to add another to that bucket it's just hard for me to find like a regular schedule uh especially working retail i work till nine a lot it, it's hard i'd have to do it week to week so that's what i'm gonna do uh as you can see here uh on my twitch channel uh i have a couple of different panels that i got made from also fiverr uh plugging fiverr uh but on my schedule over here uh it's gonna be i'm gonna try to post my schedule about a week in advance. I'm going to see how that goes, like a rough timeline, and I'm going to maybe just stream whenever I can, obviously, but I, I'm going to try it a couple times a week. Yeah, I, I might have to stream late, and if you're not around, fine, that's cool. You'll get to see the video later if you want to. If not, fine. Uh, I'm obviously going to be playing a lot of Mario Tennis in the coming weeks. I have a couple PS4 games I want to get to. I just got Persona 5. That'd be really fun to go through. It's a long video game. Um, I got the new Infamous game, which is not that new. It's actually quite a few years old. I just got a PS4, so uh, give me a break here. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of what other games. I have Near for Steam. Uh, there's a big Steam sale going on right now, so I might be getting some... Might, I shouldn't buy video games. But I kind of want to. But I shouldn't. I spent a lot of money lately. Just bought a new French press today. Ooh, fancy. Uh, but anyways, I, I, I'm very excited to just start streaming video games. Maybe I'll get to do some later tonight uh, and continue the train. But I'll do most of it on Twitch. So if you want to find me, you can find me on the Twitch channel uh, doing more of this kind of stuff. If not, I think once in a while I'll just stream on Facebook anyways. Because that's where a lot of you guys are. Um, all right. Let us sign out the show a bit. Um, here we go. Turn out that Windows capture down. Uh, thanks guys for watching. It, it's been a slice. Uh, I, I always appreciate just catching up with you all. And, uh, I think it's a fun time. Um, we have fun things happening in July too. I think Canada Day, like I said, is coming up. Be safe, everyone. But we also have Ant-Man and the Wasp coming up as well. Uh, kind of a quick shout out to the things that I didn't see this month but I kind of wish I did was tag uh, that looked kind of fun oceans 8 I'm sorry I didn't see it I, I want to I, I just didn't see it hereditary it's supposed to be a really spooky film um, maybe I'll get to see that one day I, I, I'm not sure I, I might I might pee myself uh, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom I, I don't know why I, I want to see it even though I thought the first one was totally just okay I heard the same thing about this movie um, let's see uh, I might tackle the Crash Bandicoot uh, trilogy next month maybe do a live demo of that who knows uh, Mission Impossible I guess uh, I'm not really that big into that, but I I'll watch it. Uh, Teen Titans Go. They're doing a movie in the movie for that next month in the theaters. Mamma Mia. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go see Mamma Mia 2. Uh, and I'm going to New York next month. So I'll have a lot to say about that too. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. See you later. Bye.